welcome. Yes, another episode of The Houses That Horror Built here on Warfiend TV. Now, before we talk about the film that we're going to talk about, let me once again remind viewers that this book is still on Amazon, waiting for you to buy it. This guy wrote it. Support this guy, because like I said before, I love Stephen King. He's not going to be around forever. And... <laughs> This guy is going to be his replacement. So, oh, again, geez. buy the book, support indie authors, and definitely support Radar because he is one of the good ones. So, yes, Radar, how are you doing, buddy? Man, I'm doing great, JR. How about you? I don't know, man. This was going to be a little deep. Man, and I they feel... might as well call it the deep house because we're going deep in our feelings here. Oh, we are. I think, you know, yeah, this one's going to. This was going to leave a little, little ache in the chest here. But, yeah, um, so we're going to talk about this episode. Grab your tissues because we're going deep on this one. The Night House 2020, directed by David Bruckner, who, if you were a fan of VHS and one movie that's a favorite of me and Radars is The Ritual, definitely watch this one because this film is one that would leave you with a box of tissues. So the cast includes Rebecca Hall as Beth, Sarah Goldberg as Claire, Evan Jonikike as Owen. Synopsis of this one is a grieving widow Beth recovers from the unexpected death of her husband while she lives alone in the lake house that he built specifically for her. While she grieves over her husband, she begins to have disturbing visions of a presence in the house calling for her. She begins to dig, dig through his belongings, and an even darker secret begins to unearth itself. So, yes, Radar. Now, you know, the book you wrote, which I'm going to put right here for everybody, is <laughs> what you call Grieving Horror. Yes. Now, this film we're going to talk about definitely falls under that genre, which... Oh, yeah. Hey, maybe you're, you're the, the guy that was starting the foundation of this genre now. Grieving Horror. Who knows? Yeah, but it's... Man, this this movie tackles so many like just like tough subjects, like yes. subject matter. And <laughs> from the get go, there's just not a lot of happiness or hope throughout this film. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I'm struggling to think of besides maybe the dark and the wicked, which came out ironically the same year. But I'm trying to find like think of any other movie that's like bleaker. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then, like, recent memory besides this one. And there's not too many. No. And the fact that, I, yeah, this one, it's just the whole premise of this film is built on grieving and depression. And I think it's such a heavy tone for a film. But the fact that the tone of this film carries the film. Now, the casting is great. Everything, this, we're going to get into everything we like about this film, but I mean, what did you think of this tone basically? Now, it's the, throughout the whole film, which a lot yeah. of films tend to wander off different directions, but this one stuck with that tone. I mean, what did you think of that tone throughout this whole film? I mean, it's, it is incredible that they were able to keep that just steady, you know, and like gradually increase it just a tiny bit not too much, but just keep it at that same level, you know, because it's just, it just starts with her grieving and it's this kind of difficult thing to watch. And you really hope, you know, for the main character that like, oh, this, hopefully this gets better. But again, you know, it's a horror movie. So, uh oh, it, pro it probably isn't. But as it just goes along, you know, you're like, come on, please, please, you know, just get, get a little bit, a little bit happier, slip in a happy moment, and it just really, really doesn't. What What do you think about it? You know, do you think it could have used a little more happiness, or do you think the tone is just perfect? I thought the tone was just perfect because it it didn't go too far, and it didn't diminish as you know it kept going on. Now, the thing too is, I mean, we we all, I'm sure, would grieve differently if our spouse. Right. passed away but you have it the fact that the spouse owen committed suicide yeah it's a double whammy 
you know. I mean, I, yeah, that's that that was so tough, and and I like the way it began because immediately you get this feeling of one, she's grieving; two, she is in such isolation. Yeah, from the yeah the house, like that that location, they did a fantastic job of like setting it there. Yeah, because for me, I, let me tell you, I, I when I see in this house, I'm like, this is the house, this is the house of my dreams. You know, me and my <laughs> yeah. wife, one of the things we want to do is, you know, retire somewhere where we're at a lake. And watching this movie, I was like, God damn it, how come I just can't win the lotto? Buy a house <laughs> like right now. Ooh, that lake. <laughs> that's a perfect house to get. And the fact that you're so far away from people, but at the same time for her, yeah, it weighed down even more the fact that here she is in this house that he built just for her and then he wasn't around long enough to enjoy this house yeah. that he built for her which yeah i mean I, I i love the tone of this film i think she did such a tremendous job of giving us the different layers of grieving you know yeah. because you you get that depression and then remember she she walks into the church yeah and the guy turns around like what the f- I mean, doing? Yeah, yeah, like she wasn't even allowed to grieve. She was almost like nobody wanted her around. <laughs> go, like, go grieve on your own. And, you know, that was, that added even more to this film. But, yeah, it's just like, what also is like, you, you get the tone of the film, you get the character of the film. But one of the things that make this film even more intriguing, now, the cinematography, I don't know how many times we're going to say in films, when the cinematography is on point and you have a story around it, it's it makes the movie more it pull it pulls you in a little bit more. And this one not only did it have good cinematography, but it did this certain thing with figures or yeah, shadows that you see throughout the film. I mean, what did you think of the you know these mysterious figures that show up? And how the movie did so well to basically play with our senses when it came to these figures. I mean, it, like you said, the cinematography almost becomes like a character in this movie, or at least makes a character kind of appear. And it's, it's so great at kind of like playing with, with, you know, the audience's mind with all of this, but it it adds perfectly because there is a cosmic horror element that starts to perforate throughout this movie yes. and the cinematography just does a fantastic job of kind of setting it up and foreshadowing it. Cause you're just like, okay, there's something, something supernatural has to be going on here. And it just, it does such a great way of just gradually getting you into it too. And this movie is a slow burn, honestly, but it, it, with some slow burns, certain elements don't hit pacing wise but with this one i feel like it did it it hit all the right marks it hit all its marks and cinematography cinematography was definitely one of those marks that it hit um and i i mean i don't know how you feel about it but you know i i feel it's really one of the better shot horror films of the past decade oh it is and and the thing too is when you're filming and you have certain things like glass you know mirrors right it's always Positioning the camera at the right spot to not be seen through those objects. <laughs> and I can't imagine how many different takes they did to get every single shot oh, where yeah. they did. Now, for me, one of my favorite scenes in this was I'm gonna go all the way to the end. Okay, all the way because, at the end. All the way at the end, because so Beth's husband, you know, he committed suicide, and she's still trying to piece exactly what happened because. It came out of nowhere. So as the movie progresses, you, you know, we'll talk about it in a couple minutes where you start learning about Owen's past or what Owen was possibly doing. Right. But there's a scene in the end of this film where Bess is sitting on a boat. And we'll I'll mention later who she's talking to, who she was really talking to. But in this scene, she gets rescued because. Claire was thinking that she was trying to commit suicide as well. Right. Because she did have a gun in her hand. 
almost like she was going through the same emotions that Owen went through. But when they pull her back in off the boat, they put her in a little pier there. And she looks back at the boat and you see this shadow image sitting oh, on yeah. the boat. And then Mel's like, what is it? And then she's looking and he goes, it's another man. She goes, I know. The film cuts there. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. That, that's, but like something as like that, I've I've never seen that in the film. Yeah, that, even, like that kind of that pan out and like just the, the cinematography to make that happen. Yeah. And it's it's so it's a different kind of open ended. You know, it's it's like she's it lets you know that she's going to have to continue this battle anyways, regardless. Like yes. she she may have like the war's not over, she won a battle. She's going to have to keep doing it. And it's just the perfect way to end this type of film. Yeah. I mean, if they would have did it any differently, like, it wasn't really a happy ending. Nope. <laughs> it was like, all right, you got lucky once again. Right. You know, but I'm going to keep coming. Yes. I mean, yeah, there was that scene. There was a scene where the way this um this column made a shadow figure look. Mm-hmm. That was freaking awesome. There was plenty of scenes where she would close, she close the door, and then you see a, a reflection. I mean, but it was one of those things: are you really seeing it? Or are you not? Right. Which was once again part of the whole tone of the film with her, you know, dealing with depression and grieving. You really don't. And that's what I think what I like about this film even more. You can make assumptions on every level. Exactly. Oh yeah. Was she seeing this? Was she imagining it? Was she seeing it? But Let's get into this because you mentioned this battle. <laughs> so, sport, we're gonna give you a bunch of sports, but so as sport. the film progresses, we start finding a little bit more about Owen. Best starts having these images about you know Owen either being in the house or his presence in the house. There was one time where you know. She got a phone call and she grabs the phone and basically walks to the window because a voice tells it to him. Home boy is like his spirit or something, just butt naked and falling on top of the lake. Which I'm like, all right, you know, you know I'm, not, I'm not sure I really want to watch that, but you know, all right, cool, you know, <laughs> all right, you know, <laughs> all right, dude's just hanging out naked, you know, in the lake. But then you had other scenes where I, which I think this, this is where the movie started taking a turn, is when she's. Dreaming. That's once again, you didn't know she was dreaming because during a conversation with her friends, she brought up the whole sleepwalking thing. That right. Owen used to sleepwalking. Is it contagious? So you don't know if she's sleepwalking at this moment where there's these girls running by her and basically jumping into the water one by one. And they're not responding to her voice. They're not responding to her command. But I'm going to I want you to talk about this whole battle thing. So as the movie progresses, we start finding about, you know, Owen's secrets. What are your thoughts about the reveal and kind of mention this battle thing you're, you're talking about? Right. So, I mean, it's so, this film is such a great, it's just so great because normally you'd have this twist reveal and that would be like towards the very end of the film. You know, and it, it would be like, okay, there's not really much more to go on, you know, but that's not what happens here. You know, o Owen does horrible things. He has done horrible things. Um, you know, and his excuse is that he was trying to save his wife. He's trying to save Beth, but he's still, regardless, did these horrible things. And it's like, that would normally be the bad guy. But instead, it's, it's this cosmic entity that I... You know, and they don't ever necessarily say what it is, but it's like, is it a stand in for depression? You know, and that's that's how I interpret it. I don't know how you interpret it as. Did you did you think like, oh, this is a stand in for depression? Or did you think of it was just like some sort of just a bad entity trying to do bad? All right. This is where I got the final destination feel. Uh -huh. Because she had mentioned the story to Claire, how she had died when she was 17. So she went to this, you know, how her and her friend were in a the car. They got into a car accident, and basically she was dead. 
and she had mentioned the story to Owen. You know, she was brought back to life. So Owen asked her, you know, what did you see? She goes, oh, there's nothing. So it almost felt like she cheated death and death wasn't playing around. You're right. Death wanted, like, you know, you got to come back. You got to come back to me. And at first when it was a scene where um, she was in the bathroom and this is after she found the other woman that, you know, that she thought Owen was having an affair with mm -hmm. because she was on the computer. But, um, you know, she sees Owen being the crap out of this other woman, basically killing her. And then when she goes into the living room, that's where you see Owen but with a different voice. I was like, all right, I, I don't know where this is going. I was like, but, you know, you got me. I, I want a little bit more. <laughs> and the fact that, you know, they revealed that, yeah, your, your husband was killing people to trick to trick him and to trick death enough to believe that that was her that was being killed yeah. each time. And then, you know, death was like, yeah, you know, he, he, he tricked me for a while. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. That's but, pretty. <laughs> but it still goes by what you're saying though, is was this her developing a coping mechanism for, for what her husband did? Right. Because what struck me was like, all right, she she went into the house across the street because somebody this I'm guessing it was the entity that told her go across the, the, the lake and go into that house that you keep seeing. Right. You know, which ironically, yeah, which ironically looked like the house that she was living in. <laughs> Cause that's what she, you know, yeah, she's like, Oh, and you know, she told Mel, yeah, did you know he was building a house? And you know, which I kind of wonder what Mel was part of this because Mel. Mm -hmm. He seemed to have, you no. Know, I, I get the feeling Mel knew what he was doing the whole time. Yeah, he was just like maybe a little bit. Yeah, so you know, you get the feeling that Mel knew more than he needs to know. But at the same time, you you understand that Mel was looking out for her because she was there when you know her, his wife passed away. Right. But yeah, I mean, I, I I thought that was such an interesting take because, like, I I do think you go anyway with that, and. I mean, what what did you think about when 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 she saw those dead bodies? Though? <laughs> what a wild reveal, you know. And like I said, no, most of the time, that's at the end of a film. Yeah. That is, that's a end of movie reveal, and they still like manage to keep something incredible happening for a while after yeah. that, you know. So it's that this movie really did a great job, and it's. You know, and I, I think it does such a good job playing with ambiguity of like, is, is, I mean, you can, and you can draw your conclusions of like, does this entity exist? Does it not? You know, it, like you said, is it just a coping mechanism? Is it real? What is the entity if it is, if it does exist, you know, and they never give you any real tangible answers. And that's just the perfect thing to do with this sort of like, you know, supernatural slash cosmic or maybe psychological element. Just leave it open-ended and, and not enough films do that. No. And the fact that the way they did it too is it was basically a conversation that her and NC were having throughout the, you know, when, when she saw, you know, Owen killed a, a woman. Right. And, I'm sorry, that scene where they're both sitting in the boat having a conversation and the whole thing is red. Yeah. But then when Claire is looking at her, she's just, it's daytime and she's just sitting out there. But it's, and that's where I, I for me, I think what makes this movie even more spectacular is the fact that she bounces between, you could say, the dream state and the waking state. And as a viewer, Sometimes in the film, you don't know where she's at. Yeah, you. It, the line is blurred, and that just adds another nice little layer there to you. You know. Yeah, because remember when, like, when when um, you know, she asked Mel about Owen, and he he was like, "Well, you know, sometimes you know he would be sleepwalking at night over here." Right. I just didn't want to tell you. You're like, and then she's doing the same thing most of the time. So it's just like, and then the fact that she brings that up earlier in the film about you know. The sleepwalking is it contagious because Owen used to do it. Now she thinks she's doing it. 
Right. You know, she brought, and I, I like how even when she brought up the ghost element, her best, her close friends were like, eh, you know, okay, mm, you know. <laughs> and and then the, I think this was a powerful moment in the film too, and I think I, I, I wish they would have lingered it on it a little bit more. Was when she had went out for drinks, and you know they're talking about you know about Owen committing suicide, right? And then the, her friend goes, "Oh, did he leave a letter?" And they're like, "Oh, come on, come on!" And here's the letter. She right. puts the letter on the table. There's a spot of blood on the letter, and they they go into talking about you know about the you know suicide and depression, right? And I think they did. I mean. They did it so well because it foreshadowed everything. In the, yeah. In the film. I mean, and I mean, what did you think? You did you did you did, all right? Did you feel that either she was this was part of her coping, or that all this was actually happening? I mean, I know it's a tough right. question. It's, it's a tough not, question. Yeah. <laughs> There's, I I like. I pivot, honestly. I pivot between the two because there are some great merits to both yeah. like viewpoints. You know, in one, it's such a cool concept to have this kind of entity after her. And I like that feeling. And it makes, you know, it really adds some extra oomph to that final shot, which we've already talked about. That's yeah. so, it's so magnificent. Um, but, you know, there's also like, a great humanizing and, and a great character story. If it's, she's, you know, it's just a coping mechanism. Yeah. It's also great. Now that the final shot doesn't have the same oomph, but you know, the rest of the story gets this kind of more, you know, humanized element that draws you in, uh, you know, but which, which way do you lean? Are you, are you for the final shot? Oomph? <laughs> or against I, it? I, I still have a hard time figuring out exactly where she was at because there are some instances where all right I could see the dream walking. Right, you know, kind of sleepwalking about, you know. Yeah, I, I could see it, you know, happening and and at the same time is you take this entity and I mean it made a phone call. The phone call was still there on the phone when, <laughs> when she right. checked, you know? And it, it left me like I think this was what makes this film so great is is I still don't know which side to lean on because, right? Like, you could take it more like, all right, this was her coping mechanism. Maybe in the back of her mind, she was thinking maybe she should commit suicide too. Right. And join maybe, her husband. And join her husband because there's nothing left for her. And the fact that that was said in the letter, there's nothing. Even though it goes, there's nothing, but you're safe now. But it was right. still that there's nothing. So, you know, was this to her build up to possibly commit a suicide? Right. Or was this entity really present to the point where, listen, you know, I'm going to add more guilt on you. You, Your friend died in the car accident you live. You cheated death. Your husband sacrificed all these other women for you. For because you. You cheated death. So, he suffered the ultimate, you know, he did the ultimate sacrifice, which caused him to commit suicide because it was of all you. because of you. Right. So, yeah, there was so much where you could throw that everything was all the guilt. But at the same time, the way the entity was done and the fact that it was teased throughout the film, like a lot of the films would have had the entity come out fully. Yeah. But the fact that they fooled you to the point where your mind starts seeing these shapes that are probably not there either, which how many times have we done that? You know, you go middle night, go grab something to drink or eat, you know, and munchies <laughs> and stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, what the fuck is that? And there's nothing there. Right. You go, you start turning on the lights. I mean, we've, we've all experienced it, but the way this film did it to, and tied it around the grieving and depression and whatever is in this house is like, wow. I mean, yeah, it like, and the, the best thing too. I feel like it's just, you know, the sort of way, the ambiguity that's so perfectly executed. It reminds me of the Odyssey, you know, like the OG, the Odyssey, um, where Odysseus says to the Cyclops, my name is no man. 
And then, you know, they poke out his eye. And so when the Cyclops asks for help, he's like, no man is hurting me. And they go, oh, shit, you're messing with the gods. We're out of here. You know, but like the husband saying there's nothing in his suicide note. And then at the end, her saying nobody's out there. It's amb ambiguous in that exact same way, both ways. So you're like, again, it's just brilliant where it's like, what does he mean by this word? What does her husband mean? Is nothing the entity or does he feel that there's nothing for you when you die? And that's just another another great little thing that they put in there. And they just never give away their hand. No. Because no. even when, you know, Claire, they pull her out the water and Claire is asking, you know, talking to her. She goes, I'm here. That's all she says. I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> like, and then the thing is, all right, so were you here the whole time? Were you in and out? I mean, where exactly were you during this whole time of depression? Right. I mean, it, at this movie, just I, I agree, it's so much ambiguity at every level, and it's so perfectly done at every level. It just, it really is. And again, I, it would be so easy to mess it up at one of these levels and just have it crumble across the board. But the fact that it never does just really speaks to the confidence of everyone involved. Yeah. And one of the things they did that any other horror movie would have did, right, is after she discovered the bodies, and mind you, did she really discover the bodies? That's the other question. <laughs> she didn't call the authorities. She called nobody. Yeah. Any other film would have had the person rush home, pick up the phone, call somebody, hey, there's a bunch of dead bodies, cross the lake, in the house. I mean, she didn't call nobody. She didn't. Is this, and that kind of hit me. I'm like, hold up. <laughs> you didn't call the cops. So, once again, it left you whether or not she imagined that or right. actually real, which, yeah, well, I mean, Jesus Christ, once again, the, 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 and, and we knew we were going to get into a deep dive in this one because of this. It's the fact that it's, the, the characters are done so well. Even Claire, a lot of films you would have the supporting cast try to be this, this almost like um, overstepping support system. And the fact right. that the support system wasn't overstepping, almost like, do you want me to stay? Do you, you know, you should come over sometime. It right. wasn't forced. It was like, you know, I really don't want you to hear by yourself. Do you want me to sleep? sleep over and the fact that she falls asleep on claire's lap but when she wakes up there's no claire so what it's a lot of things in this movie you're like and i think i love that so much yeah and it's and plus a lot of other horror films go the exact opposite direction where you know someone going through this type of thing with the other ancillary characters they just either ignore it or they're just aggressive towards yeah. it where they're like, whatever, get out of here, you know? And so Claire, Claire is just executed well too, because it, it feels like someone who has the empathy for Beth and wants to help her. But again, as you said, she's not overstepping her boundaries. She's not over the top or anything. She's like, this is like well, genuinely what I would do for someone. I would say, hey, I'm here if you need it, you know, but I know you need your space. And that's exactly what Claire does. So, so realistic. <laughs> it's, it's a it's, it's so refreshing to see. It was an amazing casting job because I mean, yeah, she carried this film. She made you empathize for her. She made you wonder, all right, girl, I think you need help. <laughs> I think you should reach <laughs> out for help. And you kind of you're with her with, on every step, even to the point where you know the entity starts coming around and you start suspending belief. All right, right, maybe she really is going through this with this entity. But the fact that you still go back and forth with it to try to understand what exactly she was going through. I mean, that's probably one of the most perfectly written storylines you could possibly have in a movie. Yeah, and just, just really that execution of it is so, so important. Because, yeah, you can write. You can write the best damn script the world has ever seen, but if it does not get executed correctly, it doesn't matter. And they they did so. Kudos on both fronts. Yes, I mean, hey, we, I think we could spend all the this film, we, but we could probably. <laughs> we could. But yeah, let let us know what you think about this film. Do you feel that this film is severely underappreciated for what it is? It, it is a work of art. This film, 
I would consider a hit, hidden gem masterpiece. Because, For sure. Yeah, there's, it has every aspect you can have in a story that draws your attention. Cinematography, the cast. I mean, the storyline is great. I can't knock anything in this movie. I mean, I made a joke about the dude staying outside naked, but you know, yeah. not for nine. I mean, it's part of the grieving process. You're like, hey, right. you know, is my is my other half out there? You know, you want me to come down? You know, but you know, it's just that's part of. Because I think there was another scene where she felt her husband touching her, and we right. thought it was it was going to go a little you know central there for a minute. And then she snapped out of it. You know, you're like, you know, but that's the whole. I mean, grieving process too. I mean, right? Yeah, I don't know what else to say, man. <laughs> you got yeah, anything it's, else? I mean, I I don't want to say anymore just because I want to leave it with a little bit of levity and stuff. Because I mean, we have done a pretty solid job, if I do say so myself, of mm-hmm. analyzing it, and it really is just an underrated gem. I don't understand truly why it does not get talked about more. Um, maybe it's because I'm pretty sure for the longest time it was it was on max yeah and that's just not the place horror people go to watch horror movies max is not there for that so maybe that's a huge part of it but definitely worth recommending for anyone out there you know it's it's definitely different from most of what we see horror fair wise here's a trick question for you Uh now we like the director do you think this film is on par or equal to or above the ritual? Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, we had the spot, man. <laughs> That's so hard. Uh man, I feel I feel like I I enjoy the ritual more just because of like the elements of the story are just more. I like them a little bit more, but the night house is pretty darn good. Pretty it's darn a- good. But what's the similarities between both of them? They they tackle grief for sure. <laughs> they tackle grief for sure. So maybe that's what this director should just keep doing. Just doing more more grief-based horror. Yes. Grief and he, guilt. Grief and guilt. He he does it well. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so David Bruckner, if you're listening, please, like this guy said, grieving horror, a new genre. And Come you're on. the director for it. Come on. Also, like Dave Bruckner, if you're listening to, if you ever watch this, maybe you wanted to do this one into a movie. I mean, come on. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's it for us. Um, yeah, this was uh this was probably one of our deepest looks into one of the films for so sure. far this season. And yeah, if there's any more films like this that have house in it, let us know and we'll be happy to talk about it. And if it sucks, we will tell you it sucks. But we're just going to be totally honest because that's what we do here. Give honest reviews. You can tell we do no ratings because we just wanted to talk about these films because we enjoy them so well. So, yes, Indeed. this is GR, my boy Radar, Horror Fiend TV. Till next time, let me know if there's a house with a good story in your neighborhood. We probably won't visit it, but you can just let us slow, you know, <laughs> give us a story background, anyways. But yes, till next time, like, subscribe, share. Once again, get the book. <laughs> Peace. Ooh.